One day in May, we were able to imagine millions of years of geologic history by looking at three rocks, chert, serpentine, and dacite. We were aided by the fact the creek was dry. If you come on a dry day too, you should be able to find at least some of these rocks. After looking though, please put them back. For starters, let's look at a geologic map with Jean Hetherington. This was made by a member of the U.S. Geological Survey back in 1963, Earl Pampan. It shows the relationship between the older rocks, the Franciscan rocks that make up the bulk of Mount Diablo and the dome immediately next to those Franciscan rocks. There actually is a fault that separates the Franciscan rocks and the dome. That's the big picture. Let's head down to the creek and see what we can see. Uh, as a geologist, I love creek beds, especially in a hilly or a mountainous terrain because the creek brings down everything from above. And you can start to get hints about the kinds of rocks that you might see as you continue to walk upward. And sure enough, the creek contains a rock from Mount Diablo's core, red chert. This is a beautiful piece of red chert. It has um, some white quartz veins that cut through it. Chert is a sedimentary rock that typically forms on the bottom of the ocean floor. And this rock would have been part of the ocean crust that was subducted long ago offshore of California. And during the subduction process, part of the ocean plate is scraped off as it attempts to descend into the interior of the earth. It becomes faulted onto the overlying plate, in that case, California. And so we see pieces of ocean floor that make up all of the coast range of California, including the core of Mount Diablo. And this is one piece of that. Next, if the water level allows, look for our slick bluish or greenish state rock, serpentinite, serpentine for short. It's part of a group of rocks called ophiolites. Ophio is a Greek word for snake, and light comes from the Greek word lithos, or rock. Serpentine forms when rocks of the oceanic crust, especially those containing the mineral olivine, are metamorphosed underwater. That can happen either in the subduction zone or beneath the spreading center, where heat and pressure cause new minerals to form. Some of these minerals are fibrous, making the rock look a little like snakeskin. Serpentine appears in many places throughout the park, but most prominently in an east-west band that runs from near Marsh Creek Road through Murchio Gap and a long, long ridge. That band of serpentine separates the Franciscan rocks in the core of the mountain from the pillow basalt and diabase on the mountain's north side. Serpentine soils are low in calcium and high enough in magnesium, iron, nickel, and chromium to be toxic to some plants. Introduced plants have a hard time adapting to these conditions, so serpentine soils enable Mount Diablo's native wildflowers to thrive. As you look for samples of serpentine, don't be too concerned about color. Serpentine can be blue, greenish blue, yellowish green, and everything in between, depending upon the mix of minerals when it was subducted. We found three very different looking samples in Perkins Creek. What they all shared was that slick and mottled snake-like appearance. Now that we've sampled some ancient rocks from Mount Diablo's core, chert and serpentine, let's go millions of years forward in time to look for some dacite from the volcanic dome. It's very light in color. It doesn't have any visible mineral crystals in it, unlike the piece of serpentinite that we just looked at. That would be consistent with the eruption of lava which cools relatively quickly when it comes to the surface. Its light color suggests that it is very high in silica and very low in iron. Some of the dacite you'll find in the creek is pinkish and some is whitish. 
Color is one of the more frustrating things to deal with, especially when you begin in geology. This pinkish color that you see is probably just a little bit of staining from iron or iron oxide that was in the surrounding environment. I'm confident that if we broke this rock open, it would be white or light gray on the inside. We'll move from rocks to human history in segment five. The best place to listen is right here by the creek, 